Good morning, Gateway, and to all our YouTube listeners. My name is Leslie. Today, we'll be continuing the sermon series on 1 Peter in the New Testament of the Bible. This talk will have a couple of interactive elements, so be prepared to pause the video, then press play a couple of times. But first, I want to ask a question. I wonder how many of us love going on an adventure. Do we look forward to it? Are we scared? Do we worry about it? Or do we plan it down to the last detail? Or do we just plan the first hour? Whether we like it or not, all of us are on a new adventure of getting to know one another again by spending time together. Because we've had 17 months either being apart or meeting in strange, frustrating, and very limited conditions. Now, in a minute, I want you to pause this video and write down or talk about who or what you've missed most of all doing together during the lockdowns. Press pause now and press play when you're finished. Over the last 17 months, the Christian church globally has been robbed of two very important things. One is being able to sing and worship together. The other is being able to practice hospitality towards one another in our homes or our gardens. Thankfully, we can now sing, but with masks on at the moment. But inviting folk round for play dates, coffee or dinner, especially when raining, throws up all sorts of questions, moods, anxieties, more questions and fear. All sorts of jumbled feelings. We've been isolated from one another for so long. I attended a funeral this year, and at the wake, there was only allowed the extended family and John, my husband, and myself. If it hadn't been for COVID, the church where the man who sadly died was from would have been absolutely packed full. During one lockdown, we decided not to physically attend a wedding in another city because we hadn't yet been vaccinated. And even more recently, I was attending a dinner outside with the largest number of people I have eaten with for a long time. For the first 10 minutes, I found myself struggling because I had forgotten how to do small talk. It's been so difficult, hasn't it? Currently, as a church, we are looking at the book of 1 Peter in the New Testament of the Bible. Today, we're zooming in on chapter 4, verse 9. I'll pick it up from verse 8. Above all, love each other deeply, because love covers over a multitude of sins. Offer hospitality to one another without grumbling. But this verse in 1 Peter about offering hospitality without grumbling is so interesting at this time we find ourselves in. Have we given up doing hospitality? Have we forgotten the joy it can bring? Are we grumbling about how hard it is in these times? Are we fearful? In these COVID times, understandably, all sorts of practical questions come to mind. Is it safe to have folk around? Are we really in, allowed to invite anyone? If we go, will we be pinged just before we go on holiday? What if our children don't socially distance? What if somebody wants to hug me and I don't want that? The list seems endless. 
it would be very easy for us in these times to start grumbling and also just to give up having got used to our own company maybe so many difficulties i remember decades ago when i was a full-time mum and i had little ones and this wasn't even during a pandemic i was moaning to the lord about hospitality it was thursday and our third hospitality visitor of that week was due that evening i was so tired but i've never forgotten that night it was 30 or 40 years ago now our guest ended up praying over us and leaving us feeling extremely refreshed his lightness of spirit energy faith and joy was infectious and i've never forgotten it he really blessed us the bible is very clear about hospitality in romans it says be devoted to one another in love honor one another above yourselves never be lacking in zeal but keep your spiritual fervor serving the lord be joyful in hope patient in affliction faithful in prayer share with the lord's people who are in need practice hospitality if ever there was a verse for nearly post pandemic times it's this one in a minute you can pause the video video and have a look at those two passages in 1 Peter chapter 4 verse 9 and Romans 12 10 when you finished press play again have a good discussion or write down what you think about those verses welcome back we have an enemy who would always like to keep us isolated now this is where our adventure starts an adventure of faith to claim back ground we have lost in john 13 it says a new command i give you love one another as i have loved you so you must love one another by this everyone will know that you are my disciples if you love one another practicing hospitality is a way of loving and encouraging one another breaking down all sorts of barriers our spending time together is a witness to others at my husband's big 70th birthday party here in st mark's a former colleague's partner was astonished at how many people were here how did my husband know so many people it was a wonderful witness and testimony to the church the body of christ from all nations in 1 peter 2 it says as you come to him the living stone rejected by humans but chosen by god and precious to him you also like living stones are being built into a spiritual house to be a holy priesthood offering spiritual sacrifices acceptable to god through jesus christ how can we living stones be built together if we only spend barely 90 minutes together on sundays and 90 minutes midweek if that it's impossible it's time to start a new adventure of faith to love one another afresh rediscover one another be devoted to one another by inviting each other to our homes and gardens to reclaim what we have lost 
and missed so much. To overcome our fears because perfect love casts out fear. For a while now, I've had a picture of a shimmering, beautiful, unfinished, huge silver crown on a table. There are many, many, many loose jewels heaped on the table inside the crown. The jewels are safe, but the jewels need mounting in the correct places in the crown. Then the crown will be resplendent and whole, each jewel set in its place and shining so brightly. Maybe some of you would like to pause and draw that picture. So if so, press pause and play in a few minutes. But this is a picture. The crown is a picture of us right now. We are safe inside the crown, but we need to rediscover our place in the body of Christ. The jewels need to be put and set in their different places in the crown so that they can shine brightly. We need to rediscover each other and make new friends. As we discover each other again, there will be a period of great joy, great fellowship. Yay! It's what we need. We've used the word hospitality a lot so far. Let's take a step back and ask the question, what is hospitality? One dictionary says, generous and friendly treatment of visitors and guests. Hospitality is spending time together somehow. Hospitality can be expressed in many, many different ways. It can be a walk together, a cup of tea, coffee, inside or outside, or from a flask. I was invited on a walk by my friend Natalie and her gorgeous children. And we had a great time walking in the mud and leaves and then having a break and drinking from a flask. It can be as simple as tea and biscuits, coffee and cake, or fruit, a picnic, a bowl of soup, or sandwiches. For those who are not confident cooks, a cheap supermarket pizza and frozen chips or baked potatoes with baked beans or cheese make an easy, hassle-free meal, as long as you remember to switch the oven on. And also, if money, time, or energy are low, don't be afraid to ask your guests to contribute in some way. Everybody's so willing to help out. We can use paper or bamboo plates to save the washing up. I'm all for that. And we can share what we have together. We learn from each other as we spend time eating and drinking together. Ideas about all sorts of topics are discussed. We grow. We change. We might even start planning a future project together. We can break bread, drink wine, and remember what Jesus has done for us all. We can pray for each other to be strengthened, be comforted, blessed, and healed. God has been shaking us all, taking us out of our comfort zone big time. Here at Gateway Church, there have been massive and perhaps uncomfortable changes. We now meet in five clusters. Perhaps the people we know best are in another cluster. Perhaps we don't know everybody in our current cluster. 
But this is where our adventure begins. What a golden opportunity we have to show hospitality to those we don't know. To build a spiritual house of living stones together. To discover the unknown beautiful jewels waiting to be set in the crown. To find their place and to find your place. Some of the strangers we have invited into our home, or we did invite decades ago, whether they were UK students, international students, colleagues, neighbors, a new person attending church for the first time, some of them have become lifelong friends they have become jewels in our lives and some of them have helped us during critical and difficult times in our lives. I am reminded of a prophetic word God gave us in our last Zoom meeting. Do you remember Zoom meetings? Well, the last one we had was in May sometime. And this is the first part of the prophetic word. Gateway Church, as you move into five gatherings, I am building you into five incubators. I am building you into small ICUs, five intensive care units, where some who need it can be taken care of and loved as individuals during this initial season. I think we all need some intensive care right now. I believe this is phase one of God's plan. I believe spending time together with folk in our clusters is important right now. We are living stones that need to be built together. Grumbling about having folk around, folk you don't know or do know, or allowing fear to rule in our minds could destroy us and delay a move of God's Holy Spirit, which we all long for. I believe our Father God is challenging us to march forward, to have an adventure of faith, trusting him as we regain and as we take new ground. I'm just going to pray before I continue. Father, I ask in the name of Jesus, Lord, that if we are fearful, that you will take that fear away and that you will help us to gain ground, that you will help us to march for forward, that you will help us to keep loving one another, to be devoted to one another, to regain what we have lost. In Jesus' name, amen. I believe phase two of God's plan is this beautifully written verse in Hebrews chapter 13. Keep on loving one another as brothers and sisters. Do not forget to show hospitality to strangers. For by so doing, some people have shown hospitality to angels without knowing it. Wow! I would love to show hospitality to an angel, wouldn't you? I think our children would enjoy it too. But this verse fits in very well with the second part of the prophecy. Soon my spirit will come powerfully. But at first, it is largely going to fall on those who are marginalized and misunderstood and lonely. Prepare yourselves, strengthen yourselves. Be filled with my spirit and my word and be ready to look after those who will become your new brothers and sisters in Christ. Our preparation 
for an outpouring of the Spirit on the marginalized and the lonely is practicing hospitality to each other, overcoming our fears, regaining our small talk skills, being devoted to one another, rediscovering the joy of being free, absolutely free to fellowship together. Then we will be ready to show hospitality to strangers. And if you don't remember anything else from this talk, this next part is so precious. This is the part we need to remember because we are joyously duty bound to love others and invite others for a picnic, a walk, a coffee, a simple meal because we have all received the ultimate act of hospitality from God himself. That God, through his son Jesus, while we were sinners and while we were enemies of God, invited you and me invited us into his eternal kingdom. God showed us hospitality, even when we didn't know him and we didn't love him. He's washed us clean by the blood of his glorious son and filled us with his Holy Spirit. We are his bride, we are his church. So let us march forward together, determined to rediscover each other, make new friends, loving one another, because he first loved us. And practice hospitality to those we know and those we don't know so well, without grumbling, or fear, but with thankful hearts, full of love, faith, and joy. Enjoy the adventure. Amen.